Today, we are visiting Chile de Castro. Let's get to it. I was kind of um, talking out loud yesterday um, in front of a different building that I was at. And, and I talked about Techline versus Danforth. And, uh, you know, there's people who go online and talk about the years that I've done my studying and they say, oh, I went to law school. And so I know, you know, I'm a bar certified lawyer and you put this on your trifold. Tech well, now there is something to going to law school, Chili. You may not realize that. And of course, you like to promote that uh, being a 20 year constitutional law scholar is uh, some kind of uh, credential. But let me just say, finding and reading a case is useless and worthless if you can't properly brief it by identifying the law at issue, the fact circumstances involved, the rationale upon which the court made its decision, what that decision means, and how it is applied. We're going to uh, find out that uh, you fail on all of those points line versus Danforth and let me just tell you something okay that is not Supreme Court precedent that is a Mississippi Supreme Court case you are pulled over on the side of the well now I will give Chile this point that uh, using a case like uh, test lines in a different jurisdiction is used many times I mean People, attorneys use cases from other jurisdictions all the time, but they're not binding. They can be persuasive, but not binding. So uh, that's uh, a point for Chile there. Road, and you see your brother, your cousin, your lover, your best friend, and they have the cops behind them and they're pulled over, whether that be on the freeway or on a back road, you can pull to the side and film that cop. Now, that is a heavy-duty statement claim that Chile is making there. Now, I don't know if he has anything uh, to back that up, but we're going to see when we uh, look at Tetchline case. Full breakdown. Just so you guys know, it took 12 hours straight. A little longer, actually. I spent 12 hours straight OCD like a mug yesterday doing a 10-minute video on Techline versus, it's called Tesh Lines, actually, Tesh Lines versus Danforth. Holy shit. 12 hours? I think I read and briefed the case in 12 minutes. Oh, well, that does say a lot. That does say a lot. Uh, I find most pseudo lawyer statements quite common among them. They uh, were poor at academics, usually, and failed at graduations. And their tool <laughs> to their victims is to, uh, to denigrate attorneys in a feeble attempt to appear smarter and uh, more virtuous, uh, if you will. He did a full breakdown. Just so you guys know, it took... Well, if he did a full breakdown, then he probably gave us the ruling very succinctly and to the point. And I'm sure it said something about you can pull off the side of the road at any time you want to, get, get, park your car, get out, and uh, film a traffic stop. I'm sure it says that. Let's, let's see. Well, every single one of you dunce cap lawyers who did a review on Tesh Lines versus Danforth and said, I can't believe he put this in here. This is a Mississippi Supreme Court case. You're, go you're about to look really stupid. You can quote Virgil Griffith's name. Let me just put it to you like that. In the courtroom, when you're, in, when you're going through the process of law, right? The guy who wrote the holding for Tesh Lines versus Danforth, if you invoke his name, the court shudders. Uh, I would venture to say 9.9 .9 times out of 10, nobody in the court will know who the hell you're talking about. Griffith was a big dude in Mississippi, and uh, 
he wrote a couple of books for Mississippi lawyers. But um, I never heard of the dude, and I went to the top law school in the country and litigated constitutional cases for uh, 40 years. So um, I call BS on this, or at least let's just say Chili's a fanboy. Because he was an absolute and total game changer. His name was Virgil Griffith. Test lines versus Danforth. You have the right to stop and film them when you find it necessary. Well, that's what we're about to see. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, let's take our look at uh, the Teschlein case. Uh, first of all, what, what was it about? What was the laws at issue? What were the facts, circumstances at issue? And it says it right at the beginning that this was a case about the constitutionality of a certain statute in Mississippi regarding a 20-foot requirement provision. And uh, Danforth took judicial notice that at least 85% of Mississippi's highways at the time were of such a width that a motorist could stop only occasionally without violating the law. Now, that's very important to understand is the 85% of the highways were very narrow. So let's go through here. We've got, uh, oh, the briefs first that uh, we really don't have to... Uh, get all that involved with <clears throat> and there were a bunch of them this must have been a very uh important case uh i'm just going to kind of stop things and show you some of the arguments they went through here's one that says while automobilists have the right to use public highways for the purpose of pleasure or business yet this right is not so sacred that is beyond the control of the state and municipal divisions on the contrary, there is no dissent from the general rule that the legislature, by virtue of its police power, can make regulations governing the conduct of the owners and drivers of motor vehicles. And, of course, that makes sense, and that was one of the arguments that this law is, is okay uh, because the state has the power to do it. But that was the real argument here was the fact that, well, this, this law is not really fair, if you will, given the uh, fact circumstances of the size of the roads and uh, the, the having to stop uh, on the side of the road for any particular uh, reason. So we'll go through and we'll get down to where some more, like I said, there was a lot of amicus briefs filed in this. I find that very interesting. Uh, and this is really what the issue of Tesh is known for, and that's establishing what uh, statute should be looked at as far as constitutionality and how it's actually uh, executed in the real life of being on the uh, roads. <clears throat> oh, let's, uh, I'm going slow enough so you can always stop it and, and read what you want to read. It's... Uh, you know, there's the two sides, and they're arguing, of course. But uh, Jay Griffith delivered the opinion of the court. And uh, here it is. This case involves a proper and permissible interpretation of the statute known as the Uniform Highway Traffic Regulation Act. And the section reads as follows. And I'm not going to read it. <clears throat> you can read it and see what uh, what it was. And here's... In, Section B is the uh, uh, exception to the rule, if you will. So the judge says the facts, so far as material to the point to which we shall confine this opinion and decision. So you can see right there, it's going to be a very limited opinion and decision. And some of the facts are is the appellant is an authorized carrier of passengers by motor bus. And on the occasion in question, you know, specific to this case, stopped its bus to let off a passenger in pursuance of its established custom and duty in such cases. Well, that sounds kind of normal that a 
a guy's traveling on the bus, pulls the cord and says, okay, here's where I want to get off. And naturally, the bus has to pull over to the side. The thing about it was, in this case, is the buses were too big to meet the requirements of a 20-foot clearance of the, the uh, center of the road. <clears throat> so uh, he was fined, and, an, you know, a uh, deathly accident occurred. So this was a civil case suing on negligence. It's not a criminal case fighting a traffic ticket. So I don't know how you could really use this trying to fight a tra traffic ticket, uh, but that's what pseudo lawyers do. And as the facts show, the judge says, as we shall later mention, we are not dealing in the present case with a parked vehicle. In other words, they're not even discussing a vehicle that you pulled to the side of the road, parked, got out, and uh, did some sort of business. Here, here what Chile wants to say is uh, video a traffic stop. They're not even getting to that point. <clears throat> so this court may, the judge says, and it is, his du it is its duty to take judicial notice of what everyone knows who has been beyond his own door seal. That is, at least 85% of the public highways of this state are of such a width that is only occasionally possible, and this often at distant intervals to stop a vehicle so as to leave it as much as 20 feet from un unobstructed highway to the side of the vehicle. So that's what this case is about. The case is about it wasn't negligent. <clears throat> the bus driver says, hey, I wasn't negligent. I was doing what was necessary in in uh, using the roads, and that is to pull over as far as I could reasonably to the side and let off a passenger uh, without him falling in a ditch or, or whatever. So that is the issue, the only issue that's really being talked about in this case. <clears throat> so the judge quotes and says, the right to travel means, of course, the right to go from one place to another. It includes the right to start, to go forward, and to stop when the traveler's destination has been reached. Well, that's, that's uh, normal. That's rational. That's not absurd. To speak to the first two of these fundamental rights without including the third would be to descend again into the absurd. And so far as the instant case, the case we're talking about is concerned, that is what we have here. But we do not so limit that right. We affirm that it includes the right to stop on the way. How? Temporarily for a legitimate or necessary purpose. In other words, like letting off a passenger as a bus. When that purpose is an immediate incident to travel. So I'm not sure that pulling off the side of the road, parking your car, getting out, and filming somebody else's traffic stop is an immediate incident to you traveling from point A to point B. So uh, I don't know where Chile gets that idea. I think he likes to cherry pick words and then try to shoehorn them into his narrative. But as uh, many pseudo lawyers, they fare, fare miserably at that attempt to make a legal argument with those cherry picked articles. So the rights aforesaid being fundamental are constitutional rights. That's the right to travel that they're talking about. It doesn't have anything to do with driving or filming cops or anything like that. And while the exercise thereof may be reasonably regulated by the legislature, act in pursuance of the police power of the state. In other words, the Mississippi by now may have a law that says you can't pull off the side of the road and park your vehicle. Some states have that, uh, that you can't leave and abandon your vehicle on the side of the road. That's breaking the law. So the court is recognizing that while there is this fundamental right to travel, the legislature does have the power 
to reasonably regulate it. And although those powers are broad, they do not rise above those privileges which are embedded in the constitutional structure. Of course, the police power cannot justify the enactment of any law which amounts to an arbitrary, on a whim, an unwarranted interference. Well, that, that's not absurd for sure. With or unreasonable restriction on those rights of the citizens which are fundamental. And a law against you abandoning, parking, leaving a car on the side of the road is not an unreasonable restriction on your right to travel in any stretch of the imagination. So here it is right here. The rule. This is what they, they, they talk about when, when they, the court is confronted with a challenge to a statute. And that, of course, is to look at the statute and not interpret it in such a way that creates an absurdity. So here it is, right here, our ruling. This is what they ruled. Doesn't have a damn thing to do with filming the police on, a, on somebody's traffic stop. And the court went so far to say, is they preterm it. In other words, they ignore all the other questions raised in the case. And we have preferred to confine this opinion to the one issue presented by the quoted instruction and error within. And it must be noted that we have not decided anything about the parking of vehicles or leaving them standing. So there you go. That's what the case was about. Has nothing to do with pulling over, parking, uh, getting out, and filming a traffic stop. Has nothing to do with it. Didn't even, they don't even address that. And besides that, it was a civil case regarding negligence. So you can't shoehorn this into a traffic citation and say, well, because I have the right to travel, that includes I can stop whenever I want. Nope, ain't going to work. Go ahead and try it. Enjoy the time that you have having your ass handed to you by the judge.